Cheryl. This is Arthritis Life, and today I'm really excited to have the physical therapist Brett Swigard here to tell us a little bit about what physical therapy is and how it can help patients with arthritis and related diseases. So, first off, Brett, can you just tell, or Dr. Brett, sorry, um, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and why you became a physical therapist? Um, yes. Um, so, in high school, uh, I, I was looking at different fields to go into, and um, a, a, a significant a, a thing happened to me where my, my best friend had passed away. And I realized from that moment that the things that really mattered to me in this world were, were not material. And, and it was making an impact on people's lives. And, and I believed in that so, so strongly that I started to look into the healthcare field. I, I went out and I hung out with um, some physicians, with, um, with a surgeon and a general practitioner. And um, the surgeon was out of his mind stressed and running from place to place, and I just didn't really connect to that. Um, the primary care physician um, was also stressed, and but what I didn't, what was tough about that was that um, they didn't really have enough time with their patient to yeah. make the kind of connection that I was looking to make. Right. So um, a, 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 in my senior year, I um, uh, then did some volunteering at a physical therapy uh, mm -hmm. a clinic, both outpatient, which was really fun because it was kind of like learning the puzzle of why they were in pain and yeah. and trying to go through that, and so that that appealed to that cognitive side of me. Mm -hmm. um, when <clears throat> I did some volunteer work at a rehab hospital, that's where I really realized that physical therapy has an ability to get inside of someone's life and really improve it. You're, you're, you're spending a lot of time and a, and a lot of um, investment of your own emotion and your own right, cognitive right. self into it. And, and that was really rewarding. And so I thought, okay, um, I'm gonna go into physical therapy. And, awesome. and so that, that started my journey. Um, this direction and it's just never stopped. It's It's been really fun. I went to Eastern Washington University for my undergraduate and then uh, for my uh, for my physical therapy uh, degree and I, I, I uh, graduated in 1999. Mm -hmm, nice. And so yeah, I've been a PT aging myself <clears throat> 20 years now <laughs> and uh, <laughs> experience is good <laughs> yeah yeah so um, so and I've I've loved it ever since um, but it was that core core reason of wanting to help people as to why you go into this field you just you don't become a physical therapist because you want to make a lot of money it just doesn't mm -hmm. work like that right. similar to occupational therapy yeah. <laughs> Can you walk the audience through maybe a typical day in your life here at Innova Physical Therapy, oh, your company, yeah. where I have been a patient, full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if I worked a 10-hour day, so if I work about four uh, tens, I do now do about three tens because I teach on the side I, and um, I also run the business. Right. But um, I might wake up, um, say, about 5.30, okay. take the dog for a walk, get ready, see my first patient at 7 a.m. And uh, those hot slots, those slots, that work in people's lives are the very early and the very late. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll, we at Innova uh, are one of the last clinics that have an hour-long model. So we see oh. a physical therapist or your, your patient and your PT one-on-one -on -one for one hour. Most, what are the other ones doing now? Well, it really depends on which one you go to. Um, but most of the most of the corporate larger companies, um, they're going probably between 15 and 20 minutes with your PT, and then the remainder of that oh. next. 15 to 30 minutes is with an aide or an oh, assistant. Okay. So that okay. might be someone who's a little less educated and maybe a little, um, it's just it's just a model that I choose to stay away from. Right, and right. and it's it, the model that we have is not a humongously lucrative model, but it's one in which it, it, it matches with my whole core as to why I am doing this right. in the first place. So I would see someone from seven to eight and then mm -hmm. eight to nine, nine to yeah. 10, all the way up to lunch at 12. Okay. And then I'd take an hour long lunch right. and then I would continue through the day and get done at about six o'clock. And long it day. makes for a long day, but it, it, it's very interesting though because every hour is pe completely different. Right. And right. and so um, you, you really get um, a lot of different things walking in the door. So there's a huge variety. Yeah. Um, people are different but also pathologies are different. So so it's 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 a really it's a fun day and it's it's a tiring day but I just I go home and I sleep well at night and I'm yeah. proud of what I do. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. This is 
technically this is an outpatient clinic, so for the audience members who have arthritis, this is the kind of place where you would go if you're, you know, you're living at home, you're functioning in your daily life, but there's yeah. something you either get an additional injury or there's something in the way um, that is, we would consider, it's not serious enough to need you to go have a hospital stay, but it's um, serious enough to where you can't do one of your essential daily functions. That, right. That's exactly right. And, and the amount of cost to go into a hospital is, is really outrageous mm -hmm. and people have to continue with their lives. And so right. they get in this place where um, they're not functioning well, but they're not life-threatened right, and, exactly. and, and, and so their quality is really low and mm -hmm. that's where the outpatient PT comes in. So you mentioned the variety. So you see anyone from, I've seen teenagers in the waiting room, right? And yeah. some clinics specialize in pediatrics, yeah. but, and then you see people up to, you know, kind of towards the end of life. Exactly yeah, right. right. So we do take Medicare. So, I, you know, we, we have a huge variety, just yeah. like you were saying. Um, my, my practice has evolved. Uh, when I started, I was kind of a generalist and I would see mm -hmm. ankle sprains and post-ops and stuff like that. But as I've moved along in my career, my skill set has gone up. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, patients that are more challenging have been gravi gravitate toward mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. um, because it's not as simple as I have a little torn ligament in my ankle. Right, right. Um, and so uh, my caseload is probably about 70% chronic pain. Okay. And there are groups that you know look at me and go, man, 70% chronic pain, that's really tough. And and um, you know, I wouldn't want that. And I actually disagree. I, I love chronic pain because if you have an ankle sprain, just to run with that example, um, your ankle's probably going to heal despite what you do to it over time. But with chronic pain, they're getting better because of what you've done. There's mm. there's nothing that yeah. is um, you know, just running its course with chronic pain mm -hmm. it's the interventions which you're doing it's the mindfulness that what you're installing it's it's how you're getting their biomechanics to improve that actually makes the huge change so I think chronic pain is incredibly rewarding well, that's, um, yeah I mean I think I'm speaking for a lot of the audience that lives in chronic pain we appreciate any provider who makes that their passion because it's hard to live with chronic pain yeah. and anyone who could offer solutions and strategies is is so helpful and I'm curious in physical therapy is there any sort of like advanced certification for chronic pain or is it more part of your general training that's an interesting question because there is no specialty specific to chronic pain okay. um, and but but there are lots of certifications and specialties okay. and I'm a lifelong learner I just never stop and mm -hmm. I don't want to stop because for me there's no end to my journey I'll just keep going mm -hmm. because because it gives me more tools to help more people and that's what I'm all about right. Right. Brightest Life, and today I'm so excited to have Brett Swigard. Oh my god, is that how you pronounce your last name? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna start again. And then I did some work in a rehab hospital where I was volunteering there, and that really made a big difference in oh, someone's life. Yes. Um, and so, should we start over again? Oh, no, no, no. no. Sorry, I just I crossed my legs and then I. Oh, so that's okay. Maybe you can say, I, I can fake okay, it Okay, so what do you think of that intro? That's intro. Great. Should I, 